In this video, I'm going to look at how to find the zeros of a polynomial function using the uh, TI-89 graphing calculator. I'm just going to do two examples. The first one, I'm going to do it without the graphing calculator, just to make sure you uh, understand what a zero is, or if you have a question. So let's look at the first one. Uh, P of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Okay, polynomial function, one variable. It's going to be x. I can call this f of x, g of x, using p just to emphasize that it's a polynomial function. So what I can do here is I can factor. You have a quadratic. This will factor x minus 2. And x plus 2. So you can see that this is uh, this polynomial function is going to be 0 when x is 2 or when x is negative 2, right? So 2 and negative 2 are going to be the zeros, okay? So basically 0 is uh, the number that you replace the function with to get 0, okay? So if I plug in, if I plug in a 2 where the x is, I get 2 squared. 4 minus 4 is 0, so I get the point 2, 0. So the point 2, 0 is on the graph. If I replace the x by minus 2 squared, I get minus uh, 4, rather. Minus 4 gives me 0. So these two points are on the graph. Okay. If I replace the x by 0, I get negative 4. And I'm only entering that value just to graph it here, so you can see what we have. So the point 2, 0 and minus 2, 0, and the point 0, negative 4 are on the graph. 2, 0, negative 2, 0, and 0, negative 4 are on the graph. So if I wanted to graph this, I would put, uh, okay, the point 2, 0 would be over here somewhere, right there. Minus 2, 0 would be somewhere over here. And then minus 4 would be somewhere down here, okay? Just to save space, I'm just going to go there, and then the graph would go like this. So it would be a parabola that opens up, passing through the point 2, 0, negative 2, 0, and 0, negative 4 would be down here, over here. So the zeros actually correspond to the uh, first component of the, uh, the x-intercepts. Okay, so you can find the zeros of a polynomial. You can easily uh, locate where the graph crosses the, the x-axis. Okay. okay, so that's what a zero is. Okay. Those values that generate a zero when you plug it into the function. And then, of course, also the point itself will correspond to, the, to an x-intercept. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this. Now, let's go ahead and use the calculator. So if you can easily factor the, the polynomial function, you can easily find the zero. Sometimes it's not that easy to factor, like the, uh, the second one. But uh, on the graphing calculator, we'll do the first one now on the calculator. Uh, go to F2, and you see zeros right there. So I can hit number four. And then I just type in just the right side of the polynomial, not the p of x, okay, so just uh, x to the second, minus 4, and in this one you need to indicate the variable, just like uh, I showed last time when you're solving an equation, so I put a comma here, and then an x, close parentheses, hit enter, and it gives you the uh, solution in terms of a solution set, so negative 2 and 2 correspond to the uh, zeros, okay? Now notice what happens, what happens if I, uh, if I do this. Let me clear this. And let's say I make that uh, minus or a plus. And hit enter. Okay, see, so you know, notice I get an empty set. So when you enter this command, zeros, it only gives you the real zeros. 
not the complex or the imaginary ones, okay? So this is what you have to do. Uh, notice in the commands, well, let me just do this first uh, here. In front of the zeros, I'm going to put a C. So I go to the calculator, alpha, and then C. And now hit enter. Now, see, instead of just zeros, I have C zeros. So that tells me, okay, I want the complex zeros. Now, keep in mind, when you, when you say complex, the complex numbers include all the imaginary numbers. Uh, they also include all the real numbers. So if I hit enter, okay, now it, tells, it gives me the imaginary or complex numbers, negative 2y and 2y, okay? Now let me clear this. Now on the next one, x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth and so on. If I want to do this the long way, I'd have to come out and factor this out, okay? So I could do it, basically a trial and error. If the coefficient here of the lead term is... Uh, a one, I can zeros. If if there's any real zeros, and there are in this case, there there would be factors of one twenty. So you would try plus or minus one as a zero, plus or minus two, all the divisors of one twenty, uh, plus or minus three, plus or minus uh, four, plus or minus six, plus or minus twelve, and so on. And try those as your zeros, and and get it down to a quadratic and once you get it down to a quadratic you can, you can factor or try to factor it if it factors into real factors so now if you're going to do this the long way without the calculator well let me do it with the calculator first okay so let me let's, let's go ahead and into this uh, so obviously this is this is fifth degree this is fifth degree so we know then from uh, algebra that if a polynomial is fifth degree you would expect to have five zeros okay no more than five. Okay, some of them could be repeated. Okay, so you could have uh, zero could be a zero five times. That would be five factors, it would be fifth degree. Okay, uh, and again, I want to apologize for my voice if uh, you can't make out what I'm saying. I'm, I'm a little bit hoarse here with medication that I'm taking. Uh, so hopefully uh, you can hear okay, but I'm sorry about that. Uh, fifth degree, so I expect five zeros. Okay, so on the calculator, we don't have two, and again, uh, the z this this will not give it to me. I have to put a C in front of it. But if you don't want to go through that, you can do you can f find the correct command by going over here, right here A where it has complex. Go to the right here, and there you see C solve. Okay, so if you solve an equation, this gives you all the solutions, imaginary and complex. The same thing with C factor. This gives you all the factors real and uh, non-real or complex. Uh, C zeros gives you all the real zeros and the imaginary zeros. Okay, so I hit number three. I could have done it by just using the other command and putting a C like I did in the example one, but you can do it this way also. Okay, and then I just type this in. So it's x to the fifth minus four x fourth minus seven x to the third plus fourteen x to the second minus forty four x plus one twenty okay and then indicate the variable so a comma then a variable x, close parentheses, and hit enter. Okay, there you have it. So the zeros here are negative 3, 2, 5, minus 2y, and plus 2y. Okay, that's 5 zeros. So this one has actually has three real zeros, negative 2, negative 3, 2, and 5, and two imaginary zeros, negative 2y and uh, plus 2y. So that's how easy it is to do it on the TI-89 calculator. Now if you're doing this a long way, it'd be a bit longer. I do have it worked out here, but just to save time, I'm just going to show you what you have to do. The basic what you would do is synthetic division. Okay. And you would uh, take the coefficients of this polynomial in descending power, so arrange it in descending powers if it's not. So it's x to the fifth, and then a four, and then a three, a two. 
degree one, and then it's constant zero. And you take all the coefficients and put them in this first row. Okay, so one, negative four, negative seven, 14 minus 44, 120. Now, again, keep in mind that if you're using this procedure here, you got to make sure that if there's a missing term, you put in a zero. So let's suppose there was no x to the fourth. It, was, it went from x to the fifth to x to the third. Then we'll have the negative four, you have to put a zero. Okay? Or if there's no x term, this was minus 44, x was missing. Then where I have the minus 44, that would be zero. If there's no constant term, you put a zero there, and so on. Okay? And then you would just, like I said, pretty much a trial and error. Uh, factors of 1 to 1, you would put a 1 here, and then a negative 1. The last number here in this bottom row here would have to be 0 for this value of 2 to be a 0. If it's not, you go to the next one. Okay, so uh, notice I put a 2 here. So ignore this negative 3 for now. These are the possible zeros that I'm using here. So 2, you bring this 1 down here below. So it's 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 4 and 2 is negative 2. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 7, and negative 4 is negative 11. 2 times negative 11 is negative 22, 14 is negative 22, negative 8, 2 times negative 8 times is equal to negative 16, negative 144, or negative, negative 44 rather, and negative 16 is negative 60, 2 times negative 60 is negative 120, add it to this one here, is 0, okay, the fact that you get a 0 right there tells me the remainder is 0, so basically what you can think of this is you're dividing the polynomial by x minus 2 x minus 2 is a factor. Okay, so 2 would be a 0. Okay. Then you would try, you, can, you would continue there with a, the next possible 0. Okay, so let's say you want to try negative 3. Then you would bring the 1 down here, negative 3 times into 1 is negative 3, and add these up. Negative 5, negative 3 times negative 5 is 15. At this up, you get 4. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 8 and negative 12 is negative 20. Negative 3 times negative 20 is 60. Minus 60 and 60 is 0. And you stop right there for this one. Okay, you got a 0, so that tells me that 2 and negative 3 are zeros. Okay, then you would try a 3. Okay, and it doesn't give you a 0. So you just erase and go to the next one. Okay, so it's making it easy here or to make it shorter rather. So then I try the 5, okay? Is 5 a 0? I would have tried negative 5 also, but I don't get the 0. So then I go to the next one. So let's say 5. Bring this down. 5 times 1 is 5, minus 5, and 5 is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 4 and 0 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20, minus 20 and 20 is 0. So there you have it. Okay, now we divided then. This is the equivalent of dividing the polynomial, fifth degree polynomial, by a factor of x minus 2, x plus 3, x minus 5. Okay, okay. So that reduces the degree from 5 to, this is now a second degree. So basically, this just gives me x squared plus 4. Okay. Remember, using the calculator, we got plus or minus 2y as zeros. So now, once we, once we get it down to a quadratic, then we, we, can, we can just say, okay, x squared plus 4 equals to 0 for what values? Okay, x squared plus 4, you, know, you can factor it over the real numbers, but let's just do it over the imaginary numbers. But let's just do it this way and say it's x squared is equal to negative 4. Okay. Quadratic, so then we take the square root of that, we get x then is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 4, because we have a minus 4 under the radical, that's going to be the imaginary number, so this then is going to be plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2, and of course the square root of a negative 1 is, that's your i. So there you have it. 2, negative 5, and 5 are the real zeros. Uh, plus or minus 2i, plus or minus 2i are the imaginary ones. 
Now keep in mind, these could be repeated. These could be repeated. So if you're having problems following this procedure, keep in mind that this could, you, you could have something like this. Okay. To the fifth power. Okay. So this would be, if you go ahead and multiply this out, the first term would be x to the fifth. And then you'd have the last term would be negative 2 to the fifth. Okay, so you'd have a polynomial with uh, six terms, right? So what I'm telling you here that the zeros for this one would be 2 multiplicity 5. See, 5 factors of x minus 2. So it's possible here that 2 would work, and then 2 would work again, and then 2 would work again, and then 2 would work again, and so on. Okay, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you, you might have to repeat your, your synthetic division here, okay? But here, like I said, I'm, I'm emphasizing the uh, the calculator, okay? So keep that in mind. I uh, hope this helps you out. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.